Hello friends, Dr. Renee Tucker here. Glad to have you back. Today's episode of Horse Mystery Solved is part two of Kissing Spine. So I am going to recap that briefly here in a minute, but if you haven't heard the whole episode, you might want to go back to that. That's episode 41. This is episode 42, part two of Kissing Spine. Now I do want to warn you that you may quit listening to me after this podcast, but I feel it's worth the risk to bring you the truth, or as best as I know the truth at this moment in time. Okay. He's like, what is she going to say now? I know, right? Okay. First, a little recap about Kissing Spine. It's a lot, it's a kind of a long process. It's multi-step of how Kissing Spine happens. So at the beginning, we have a problem with the liver. Okay. The liver is having an issue and it cannot make the proper ligament uh, building blocks or groceries or whatever you want to call it. The stuff the ligaments need to be correctly built and strong. Since the liver's not working right, the ligaments aren't getting the correct building blocks, so the ligaments become a bit weak. Weak might be the wrong word. It's more like brittle, right? Ligaments have a lot of um, like long tubules in them, if you will, and they get to where some of them are starting to break or snap. K similar to when an electric cord has some wires in it are breaking on the inside, but the whole thing still looks good from the outside and it is still sort of working, but it's starting to crack on the inside. So that starts happening. Now, <clears throat> the ligaments are basically what holds the whole skeleton together. Ligaments connect bone to bone, quite literally. They, they stick on the bone on one end of the ligament and another bone on the opposite end. And so it holds the skeleton together. It also though, keeps the skeleton from collapsing in on itself. So when those ligaments aren't working quite right, the body's uh, particularly along the spinal cord, but everywhere else as well. But along the spinal cord, those vertebra start collapsing towards each other, squishing the spine, shortening it. So the body says, uh oh, our intervertebral discs are getting squished. We must do something. Because if those intervertebral discs keep getting squished and overpressured, well, what? They're going to rupture, right? They're going to bulge, rupture, and then there could potentially be damage to the spinal cord, in which case the horse is kind of, you know, dead then. So the body is thinking, oh my gosh, what can I do to avoid this terrible problem? So the body is desperate and they build extra bone in between the spinous processes of the vertebra to avoid the complete collapse of the spinal cord, uh, spinal vertebra system. Okay. Um, the hows and whys of that, I believe I covered in the previous one, and that was the summary. Now, I would like to talk about the liver some more. The liver is the mm, sort of primary cause, if you will, of kissing spine. Now you will not find uh, liver, uh, sorry, <laughs> liver issues on the blood work itself. If you take a blood test and you look for the liver, you only start seeing the liver enzymes being elevated. So that's bad, but that only shows up when you're just starting into liver failure. We're not talking about liver failure here. The liver is still trying to work as best as can, but it can't do it. So you won't see it on the blood work, first of all, that's important to know. And then what happens is the main cause of this liver issue for kissing spine is heavy metals. So the liver is trying to filter these heavy metals to get them out of the body. Because too many are bad. They are toxic. Things like aluminum and arsenic and stuff like this. 
However, when the liver is filtering these heavy metals, it actually damages the liver itself. I know, right? So it can only do so much at a time. Secondarily, when the liver filters these heavy metals, it, the best place for them to go is into the uh, digestive system so that they can get pooped out. Makes sense, right? However, it all, if you put heavy metals in the digestive system, you know, the intestinal tract, it damages the intestinal tract itself. So the liver's in a tough spot. It's got to do it, but it's hurting it. And it's got to eliminate it, but it hurts the elimination pathway. So what can be done? Now, let me tell you a story about airplanes. Okay, listen, because the body is beautifully designed. God has made secondary tertiary systems just like airplanes. I don't know if you know this, but I learned it. I thought it was fascinating. Airplanes have uh, secondary and tertiary systems for a lot of the planes. They do not want them to crash. So for example, the electrical systems of the big airplanes have tertiary, so three completely separate, redundant uh, electrical systems. That means if the first um, system fails, the one they always use, if it fails for whatever reason, the second one kicks on and it works. If the second one fails, yeah, the third backup system kicks on because they don't want the plane to fail, right? They'll do anything. So they've got tertiary backup systems for the electrical and other uh, systems as well. I don't know all of them, but I think that's cool and, and a good plan, really. We do not want to fall out of the sky when we're in an airplane. So here's the thing. God made backup systems. Check this out. There are times when people go in for open heart surgery and they're going to do a bypass surgery. So say they have a clogged artery and then some of the major lines of the heart, right? The arteries, the surgeons go in intending to put a, a new artery from one of the clogged arteries to an unclogged artery. Just, it's just called a bypass. I'm sure you're familiar with that. Sometimes they go in there for that surgery. Get this. There's already a bypass artery there and the body built it. Yes, you can look this up. The body will build new arterial routes, including major arterial vessels, if it feels it needs it. Major vessels, just crazy. I mean, the aorta is enormous and the body will build another one if it needs it. That's kind of crazy. Don't you think that's kind of weird? <laughs> it seems weird to have this extra stuff available, but the body will do it. So as we kind of already talked about with kissing spine, the body is building extra protection for its spinal cord with bone in between the spinous processes. Now, the other backup system that I want to talk about is for the liver. We talked about the livers trying to filter the heavy metals. Yes, giving the horse an herbal supplement for the liver support and or liver cleanse will help. It absolutely will help the liver. It'll help them clear the heavy metals and help heal the liver of some of the damage that's occurring to the liver because of the heavy metals. That will absolutely help. It will absolutely improve portions of your heavy metal um, kissing spine issue. But I want to talk about this secondary backup system for heavy metals that is already in the body that unfortunately uh, people, humans, were damaging it. And that is the parasite system. This is the part where the cognitive dissonance might come in. It really came in for me because the truth of the matter is, and here, here it is, I'm going to lay it there. Please listen with your spirit, okay? Because the spirit knows the truth. Parasites are the first line of defense the body has against heavy metals. I'm just pausing for you to process this. It took me quite a while myself. Parasites eat, let's just say eat, okay? They suck 
They attach to the intestine and they suck. And we all thought, well, they're eating the food. They're not eating the food. Parasites suck out heavy metals. So what do we do? And we think we're being great horse owners. And I've been, you know, thought this was true as a veterinarian until probably only two years ago. Those parasites are needed. They suck out the heavy metals. And when they're full, then they're pooped out. Okay. I know many diligent horse owners are checking the parasite eggs and only deworming when there's a good amount. You know why we do that? Because some of the parasitologists, so these are people with a PhD in parasites, in some of their papers, they have been talking, and for quite a while, that they believe there is some kind of symbiotic relationship between the body and the parasites. You know why? Because the, our bodies don't have an immune reaction to these parasites. They, they don't say, oh my gosh, here's an evil invader. Let's get rid of it. Now, hold on, because I know some of you are thinking sometimes they do. Rarely they will, but most of those reactions are going to be to parasites from other species. So, for example, if you eat uncooked pork or uh, sushi that's not cold enough or whatever, so you have parasite eggs from other species like the pig or the fish, those don't belong in the human. So yes, absolutely, our body mounts an immune response. We get sick. Those parasites go all over the body because they're super confused, wondering how they got here. <laughs> oh, they're supposed to be in a pig, and here they are in a human. Okay, so that's one issue, and that's separate, okay? But the human parasite, the humans do not form an immune response. Horse parasites. The horses are not developing any kind of immune response. It's almost like they're supposed to be there, which they are. Okay, I know this is hard. It reminds me of a time back when I was young, and I was a young girl, and I hated worms. Regular garden, red, wiggling worms. I mean, you. And my brothers would terrorize me with worms and I would run away, okay? Because, ew, you know? And it wasn't until I was an adult and I realized, oh my gosh, earthworms are so valuable. They eat the soil. They cleanse the soil. They add minerals to the soil. They aerate the soil. If there's no earthworms, then it's very, very, very difficult for plants to grow. So I, once I learned the value of garden worms, now when I see a little red worm, I think, oh, you are so cute. And I'm very happy because that tells me the soil is happy. So it'll take some time, but it's the same thing with the horse parasites. We need to stop deworming. I know, I know I'm killing you right now. Take it or leave it. Maybe leave it and come back to it later. Those worms, the parasites, suck up heavy metals. When they're full of heavy metals, they're pooped out. Have you ever thought it mysterious why there are, in a herd of horses, only one or two horses that get most of the botfly eggs? It's because they're the ones with most of the heavy metals. The flies know. The horses kind of lick them, don't they? Just let them be. You're saying, that's going to kill my horse to have so many parasites. No, it won't. There is actually a study. Um, I for, I'm sorry, I do forget the university, but it's at a university study. They had an entire herd of horses for 40 years. So far, they're still there. Who have been not dewormed at all for 40 years. Now, it's a closed group. They're not horses in and out. It's closed herd. No dewormer. And the researchers are like, yeah, they got parasites. Some a little bit, some moderate. And they're perfectly healthy. There are no problems not deworming. Now, I want to ask them how much kissing spine they got over there, okay? But, you know, not yet. All right. So here's my point. We already know kissing spine is from heavy metals 
trashing the liver. The liver can't make the ligament groceries. Ligaments are failing. Spine is squishing. So our backup system to the liver filtration and then mm, the liver putting the heavy metals in the digestion and pooping <laughs> mechanism. So, so as I was saying earlier, the liver gets damaged clearing heavy metals. The, the GI system gets damaged clearing heavy metals. They're still doing it. But the first line of defense against heavy metals that's supposed to be there is parasites. If the parasites can clear the heavy metals, the liver's not damaged. The intestine's not damaged. You see? Please do email me if you have questions. I know it's not easy. I know it's not easy when you see your horse poop and there's worms in it because we all go, oh my God, there's worms. I know I still do. I still think they're kind of gross. Okay. But try to change it like I did with the, the little red garden worms. I'm like, oh, well, you sure are weird looking, but I'm happy you're here because that means you're doing your job. And the garden is healthier for the red worms and the horses are healthier to have actual parasites. Yeah, it's true. Now, I know there's a few, um, you know, potential issues you might think of that I've thought of so far. Well, what if your horse gets pinworms and they itch their butt? Well, yeah, when the worms are full, they come out and they are itchy sometimes. Let them be itchy. Wrap the tail, wash their butt, okay? Don't deworm them. Let the worms finish their job. If you start doing this, you are going to have more worms. Yes, the parasites need to be there, and they need to catch up. They need to get rid of all those heavy metals. So you might see something. Maybe your hair coat's not quite so beautiful, okay? Just give it some time. Let it get flushed out. Another issue is neck threadworms. Are they itchy? Yeah, they are. But that's where the heavy metals are. Just let it, I know this is really hard, but the more we try to deworm against neck threadworms, the worse they come back. Okay, the body is trying to save itself. Just stop deworming. I know, easier said than done. Just keep breathing. It's okay. I'm not trying to be... A jerk about that. I have to say that to myself. When I learned these things that I thought were true for so many decades, then I'm like, oh crap. <laughs> that was wrong. Dang it all. Okay. I think that is all for today. Oh, um, just to let you know, I am not the only weirdo. <laughs> Let's go with front runner, shall we? Um, front runner weirdo who's saying this, right? Uh I was confirmed, would confirm my brain anyways, uh, by a physician, uh, one of the new, not, um, what do they call it? They have a whole curriculum called New Biology, where they're really sharing the truths about things that we've gotten wrong for so many years. Uh, Dr. Tom Cohen, C-O-W-A-N. And he was the first person, and in fact, the only person so far that I've heard confirm my hypothesis about the parasites. And that's who said it first. Parasites, first line of defense against heavy metals. Okay. I will see you guys next time for an exciting, crazy talk. And please keep sending in your questions and comments. I love all of them. Thank you for listening. I'll see you next time.